Every Home Assistant automation has three core components. Triggers, that start your automation. Conditions, that determine if the automation should run. And action, that make things happen. Master those three elements and you will unlock the true power of home automation inside Home Assistant. In this video, I will take beginner-friendly approach and I'll show you exactly how to build automations inside Home Assistant using those three components. So we are going to take a look at triggers, how to create one, how an automation can have multiple triggers and what are the different types. Next, we're going to look at conditions and how they add rules to your home automations. Finally, we will look into actions and how they can control any device in your smart home. At the core, every home automation follows the same format with three main components, triggers, conditions and actions. Let's break down exactly what each component does and how they work together. A trigger will determine when your automation starts. Think of these as events that initiate automation process. Without a trigger, your automation will never run. Conditions are optional but powerful filters that determine if your automation should actually execute its actions. If a condition isn't met, the automation will stop. Actions are what actually happens when you run your automation. This is where you control your devices, send notifications, or activate scenes, amongst many other things. The beauty of the system is its flexibility. You can have multiple triggers, complex conditions, and a sequence of actions all in one automation. Let's start with triggers, the events that start your automations. Home Assistant offers several types of triggers that can detect changes in your smart home environment. Device and entity triggers are the most popular in Home Assistant. For example, a light and a switch might respond to a simple on and off state. Door and window sensors will use open and closed. Motion sensors will activate when they detect movement. And the battery level triggers can alert you when the device needs charging. Location-based triggers are also quite popular. You can schedule actions to happen at a specific time of the day, on a certain date, or maybe reoccurring schedule like every Monday at 8 a.m. The sun integration calculates the sunrise and sunset times specifically for your location. You can even trigger automation based on calendar events, making your smart home aware of your schedule and routine. For more complex scenarios, Home Assistant offers advanced trigger types. Persistent notifications can trigger automations based on notifications in your dashboard. Webhooks allow external services to trigger your automations, while templates give you the power to create custom logic for complex conditions that combine multiple states or calculations before triggering. So here we have a simple example of a kitchen automation that uses a state trigger that checks the motion detection entity of this motion sensor. When the motion sensor changes from clear to detected, it means it starts detecting movement in the kitchen. So it triggers the automation and it will continue to this conditional check. Likewise, when this motion sensor state changes from detected to clear, meaning it will stop detecting movement, it starts a two minute timer. If no motion is detected during those two minutes, the automation will proceed to the action step. And this delay prevents the lights from turning off if you're simply standing still for a moment or if the sensor has lost sight of you for a minute. Instead of responding to an entity state changes, this automation is scheduled to run at a specific time. It uses a fixed time trigger that is set to activate precisely at 5 p.m. every day. While this automation uses a fixed time, you could replace that static value. This would allow the trigger time to be dynamically changed through Home Assistant UI, perhaps a different automation, a script or a service call. For example, you could create a separate automation that would adjust the garage light time based on the sunset, seasons, or maybe your work schedule. This would create a chain reaction where one automation modifies a helper variable that then affects when this garage light automation triggers. This approach makes your home automation system more flexible and responsive to changing conditions. A good example of location-based automation is when you add your mobile phone to the Home Assistant. You can attach it to a person, so then when a person enters or leaves a predefined area, this could be your trigger for the automation. So in this case, I have defined several zones inside my Home Assistant, and this can be used as a trigger condition for my automation. 
And then as a result, I can send a persistent notification to a different device to let them know that I have just arrived at home. Home Assistant is very flexible when it comes to devices you can control and the triggers you can set. One of its features is that you can add multiple triggers to a single automation. This means your automation can start in several different ways. So if we take a look at my garage light on automation, we already have one trigger, but we could add another one let's say when the sun sets. So that means either of these trigger conditions have to be true for this automation to take place and automatically switch on the light. Now let's talk about conditions. The optional but powerful filters that will determine if your automation should run. While trigger start your automation, the conditions determine if they should actually run the automation action. Just like triggers, home assistant conditions can use device or entity state, can be time or location based, or if they are more complex, they can use a template. For example, I have this light automation that every time motion is detected in that area, it will trigger. However, because we have added this optional condition that checks for the light intensity, if the value is below certain threshold, in this case 25, only then the lights will be switched on. Another example is this AI morning routine that runs every day at half past nine. Due to my time condition, it will only run Monday to Friday. And this will switch on my coffee machine, get the latest web information, send that information to the ChatGBT. ChatGBT will then process that information and announce on my Alexa and voice preview devices what should I wear for that day. Now for the exciting part, actions. This is where your automation actually does something. Calling a device or entity is the most common type of action. Quite often it's turning things on and off. The most basic action include switching on the lights, switches or any other device. You can also adjust the settings. You could change, for example, the state of the device, like diming a light to a 50% brightness, changing its colors or setting a thermostat to a specific temperature. Sending notifications. For instance, you could get an alert if a door is left open. You could also fire an event which is more advanced action that lets you create your own custom events inside Home Assistant. Other automations can then be triggered by these events. You could call another script or a different automation, where one automation triggers another, allowing you to create more complex and module routines. So in this motion activated light automation, our action is to switch on these light panels. However, if you have a very good integration like this one, there is many other things that we can do. We can change the color of the light, you can change the color temperature, adjust the brightness, or even set the light effect. As well as we have many more advanced options that I haven't really experimented with. But hopefully this just shows you the power of Home Assistant and the amount of things that you can do and set within your automation. So if we look again at our morning routine automation, as we can see, it has several actions. The first action switches on the coffee machine. The second action gets the latest weather information. And then the third action will take the variable from the weather information, convert it into a message. And then this, this is then sent to a chat GBT for the analysis. And then the response from the chat GBT is then passed to another service called announce, which is then announced on my Alexa devices. And then this is also announced on my voice preview edition. So as you can see, we can pass the data between the steps, which is then evaluated by the next step and used in its own response. Think of Home Assistant as a central command center for your smart home. By itself, it knows about things like time, sun position and date, but to do truly powerful things, it needs to talk to your devices and online services. Integrations are like bridges that makes this communication possible. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments below what kind of automations are you excited to build.